Look out. Footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly. I'm changing it up today because stuff the intro. Hi, Bryony. Goodbye. Because we are going to an interview right now with Carlton superstar Darcy Vessio. All right. AFLW Today. The guests are getting bigger each yeah. and every week. I absolutely love this. Have a Carlton superstar coming on. It's their 75th match this week. It's the thousandth game that Carlton have played at Icon Park. But more importantly, big rug maker. It's Darcy Vessio <laughs> from the Carlton Blues. Really? Welcome in, Darcy. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, very excited for the weekend. But obviously, rug making um, is my number one priority at this point. Yeah, let's get into that. How did you get into that? Yeah, I'm exactly. Really, I'm a bit intrigued by the uh, rug making. I heard that in the uh, the rumors. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, my cousin Piper actually started doing it a couple of years ago and when she first told me she was making rugs, I was probably as confused as everyone is when <laughs> I tell them I'm making rugs and I was like, what do you mean? How do you make a rug? Um, and she, yeah, took me through the setup. She's got pretty much like a machine gun that shoots yarn. Um, that feels pretty cool. powerful. Awesome. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm not much of a gun person myself, mm. but Respect. the rug gun is okay um and then yeah you just shoot a rug anything you can draw you can rug oh really there you go that, yes. that sounds like yeah. a good like slogan for, for yeah. some brand or something yeah. in the future after anything you can draw you can rug that's, no, that's it's, if you can draw it you can rug it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds good so when darcy has the new instagram profile of rugs with darcy that is clearly yeah, I'll, I'll the slogan that. yeah that'd be awesome that's it. That'd be perfect. Thank you. So, so that's it, it. Does lead to sort of. Like, I love talking about what players do outside of footy. Mm. Is that just something that helps you stay grounded and, and takes your mind off what is a very, uh, sorry, uh, put together season with what twelve games in eleven weeks, even before finals. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think the longer my career has gone on, the more I've realised how important it is to have something outside of footy um, and not just something to distract you but something you're passionate about and you can really like dive into and look forward to on days off so for me I've always been a creative person and I feel like that feeds into my footy as well so when I'm able to be creative off the field I feel like it flows onto the field as well absolutely so that leads down the track because you have a degree in furniture design so like how yeah. does that work because i've worked got, as a graphic designer I, yeah. i've got yeah. a business management degree and it's basically like you <laughs> do don't you? do this in business and i'm like okay so do the opposite of what i think but how does one get a degree in furniture design is it like similar to sort of architecture but just an offshoot kind of yeah cool. so i i actually started um i moved to melbourne to do graphic design at rmit and then after a year i was like nah too much computer time <laughs> and then so I jumped into furniture design and it was pretty much the process of designing as well as making furniture. So um, I feel like I had a few of those skills from high school, but I was just extending um, on that. And then I jumped back into graphics uh, once I left uni um, and ended up kicking a sack of air around. So it's come in handy <laughs> um, for sure. Um, no, I haven't uh, used the furniture design degree much, but I'm hoping it'll it'll come it'll come into play soon. Yeah, These nice. things always do. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. We probably need to talk about footy because I can feel your media manager yelling at me right now. So obviously <laughs> humongous game this weekend. Uh, it is the thousandth match that the Blues are playing across Crazy. the men's and, and uh, AFLW program at Icon Park. How exciting is that for it to be the thousandth match and to be a part of that? Awesome. It is, yeah, it's pretty special. Like it's one of those things you obviously don't really count. Like when you're heading into a game, you're not really aware of that sort of stuff. But um, it got brought to my attention and I think it's been an amazing time to be able to play footy back at Icon Park. Like I know a lot of people who come and watch our games reminisce about when they were watching um, the men play, um, you know, back in the day. So it's been awesome being able to revive the venue um, and to be able to, I guess be part of the 1000th game um, is amazing. Like I, I hear they're giving out tickets, which will be pretty special awesome, like, yeah. for the collectors out there. So it'll, yeah, it'll be really special. It's important part of history as well. Yeah. Talking about just history in general, your time at Carlton, what's your best Carlton memory? I know that's a bit of a broad one, but obviously you kicked four goals in the first ever AFLW game. Is that, is that right up there? Or have you got a, another one off the field, on the field, anything uh, to do with Carlton, do you think? Oh, definitely. Yeah, the first game, I think, is something that becomes more and more special um, the the older I get. Like, yeah, it's absolutely. really nice to reminisce about it. Um, 
and yeah, I, I keep hearing like news stories about what people were doing that day and where they were sitting and stuff like that. So I always love hearing about that. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like being able to um, play in a, uh, I think we played in a, the game before the prelim um, in 2020. That was really special as yep. well. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've made a lot of a lot of good memories here. Absolutely. So. Last couple of, or last week, the results didn't fall your way and you now come up against the Brisbane Lions who look almost inexorable at the moment. How, how are we feeling? How's the squad feeling coming into this? Because this is a big test. Mm. Yeah, oh, it's a massive game for us. Um, but I, I feel like we almost, you know, the last few weeks haven't gone as well as we'd liked, but it, I hope it gives us a bit of freedom to just play the way we want to play. Like we know Brisbane have been like the benchmark of the competition for a long time. So it's an awesome challenge for us to just go up against the best and just try to be really process driven and see how we go. Like these are the games we want to play in. So we'll give it, a, give it our best crack and see how we go. Like it. One, the final question, because Ooh. we know you're on a tight schedule. You got to meet Luke Longley yes. and Scotty Pippen early this year. How was that? <laughs> oh, I'm that jealous. Did you need a stepladder? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, they are huge people. Yeah. I don't think, Unless you see them in the flesh, you're like, oh, my goodness. I had no idea because otherwise you're just watching them with other people who are mm. tall. So you really don't get the idea of just how massive they are. <laughs> um, but they they shared their, um, I guess, their stories um, and how they progressed through the basketball ranks. Um, but it was really special hearing about their relationship to each other and how um, I think the biggest takeaway was how different their personalities mm. are and how it takes all kinds to – I guess, build a successful team. But it was amazing to have that insight from them. Was it interesting to hear Scotty Pippen's voice just the, in person? Like his voice is just wild every time I hear it on a, on a microphone oh. or anything like that. I don't know. I could either put you to sleep or just calm you down or something like that, I reckon. Well, in saying that, like I loved hearing him on the day, but I've also listened to his sleep story on oh, Is that actually a thing? I was, I was just joking. That's <laughs> awesome. I need to get onto that. <laughs> yeah, when we went on our bike camp earlier in the year, <laughs> I couldn't get to sleep because I was – exhausted from the day and just wired and I just put on Scotty Pippen and he put me oh, to sleep. Perfect. Yeah. I've it's heard amazing. that. Yeah. He's one of the most popular Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Uh, that, those would be two really good ones on there. I, I've listened to a Matthew McConaughey <laughs> reading a book to fall asleep before. It's it's it very works. nice. Yeah. 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 Scotty Pippen. Mm. I need to get on to that. But yeah, maybe you can do that Saturday night after <laughs> you get down to Icon Park to yes. see Carlton run out in their thousandth match at Icon Park. A big thank you to Darcy Vessio for joining us today on AFLW Today. Thanks so much, Alex. Thanks, that's Guy. Thank you. <laughs> Darcy Vessio could be the coolest person I've ever talked to. No offence. And welcome in Bryony Dawson. Second coolest person you've ever spoken to. I'm devastated I wasn't there for that. Although I've spoken to Darcy many times, yeah. so it's fine. I mean, you got to hang I'm out. I'm fine with it. You got to hang out at a, at a wonderful spa retreat. I did have a lovely few days away, but I also watched uh, a lot of footy also. What a way to live life. Because footy's back. Footy's always <laughs> back. And... Got a message during the week. Alex, before Daylight Savings hits, get me on the show. I've got a lot to get off my chest. The Perth teams are killing it. It's Big J journalist Eliza Riley over in the West. What's up, Eliza? Hello. I like how you said I reached out to you. I feel like that's one of those trade things where it's debating which club reached out first. I feel like, but I still have plenty to talk about. Don't you worry about that. Yeah. I'm very excited to have you on the show, Eliza. I love hearing uh, your input and, and all things footy, so I'm very much looking forward to this episode. Hmm. Before we get into it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is AFL Today. Just click the like, subscribe button, leave a comment. Just get in there. Do you like, you know, we're, we're the black shirt cool group today. That's what we That's are. That's what's up. Uh, with a bit of fluff on the side there of Eliza's jumper. <laughs> a bit of fluff <laughs> on the fluffy. side. No, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, the social media is AFLW Today. It's AFLW Today, AU on X, but Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, chip reviews coming out the wazoo. And of course, wherever you get your podcast, just search AFL Today. Anyway, footy's back. Footy's back. Eliza, you've got issues with footy though. So there was a certain issue last Friday at Punt Road. The technology didn't work, you know, kind of great given we just paid Katy Perry $5 million to play at the grand final. Not the point. Different line item, Alex. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Let's move on. Eliza's not happy because it's definitely cost Gold Coast the win. Charge in like Jeff Thompson back in the day off the whacker. Well, where do I start? The AFL told us at the start of the season that this technology was 99% accurate. Now, that's a pretty bold call to make. Mm -hmm. And 
we've seen them one percent, and it's not good, is it? It no. costs the Falco Suns a game of football. Um, they've been robbed twice now by this ball review technology. Although the one a little earlier in the season when Matty Guerin kicked that goal um, up in Mackay at Great Barrier Reef, that was, you know, the, I think the Suns' issue with that one was that they didn't actually have a, a goal line replay and couldn't actually tell whether it was touched or not but still result obviously went against them and then we get to to punt road on friday when they're playing collingwood both sides really desperate for their first win of the season and then the second quarter jamie stanton the veteran of the gold coast sun snaps on goal goal umpire calls it a goal all the teammates are celebrating there's no reaction from the collingwood players couple seconds later we get the the little earpiece for the umpires going hey actually we're going to overrule that that was actually touched and the balls told us it was touched so goal gets disallowed players are confused and then it becomes apparent in the hours afterwards that it was not touched at all it should have been a goal and the Suns end up losing by three points so the one percent it's not good. <laughs> What's the um, AFL said about it and, and the ball tracking people? Have they come back out and said, oh, you know, ooh, that's that's a one percenter? How bad? <laughs> yeah, they, they did say how bad. They did own up, put their hand up and said, look, we're going we're gonna to cop that one on the chin. But basically what happened is there's two layers of, you know, intervention. There's the first of all the ball which tells you if it's been touched. Like it's like a little timeline. So every instance during the game when someone touches the ball, someone kicks the ball, it records a little a little touch on this timeline. And then the second layer of intervention is the sort of human backup. So someone at the ground who's called like a score review officer or some fancy title mm. like that, they basically um, can line up the, the touch that the ball records with video replays and make sure that what the ball's telling us is actually accurate and that's supposed to, you know, make up for the 1% of errors the ball does <laughs> make while still gaining data and learning. But basically what happened is both of those layers failed. The human error element is at the score review officer at the ground only reviewed one replay of the goal sort of thought, oh, that seems legit. Like, that seems to line up. Like, I think there's a touch there. I don't know what they're thinking. They'll probably mm-hmm. need to see an optometrist, to be honest. Oh. There is one review of it. Replay. There is one angle where it does look like there's a back of the finger where it looks like the ball has touched it. When you see it from then that side angle, you can see that it's the player is... you away. Yeah, yeah, it's so far away. So, yeah, that and mm-hmm. and it's supposed to happen before you continue with play, right? If the play has happened... They didn't get back to the centre circle by the time they'd changed it Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. but that puts a lot of pressure then on that second layer, which is the human element, to be like, okay, we've got to get it done before it's... But surely you, know, you can just go, oh, no. The technology is, you know, the alarm's going off. Like, I want, like, red lights and stuff going off so we all know what's going. I'd be like, nah, just hold up. We're going to have a look here. And then it's like, okay, you can take a minute. That's fine. Because the good thing about W is it's over in two hours. So it's not like, you know, you're taking forever. Mm. To take a minute to... Yeah. We've all been at AFL games, right, where they take, like, a good two minutes to look through every angle of the game. So I don't mind if if the game's on the line in W to to get it right. And the the score review officer, there was multiple angles of vision available, which is obviously the one you mentioned, Bryony. Yeah. Um, they didn't look at it. Like they only looked at one replay, said, oh, you know, that seems all right. And then at half time, they went back and looked at the other angles and went, oh, I think I might've got that wrong. Yeah, that that person is definitely looking for a new job right now. I'd say that's, that's... Uh, silly sausage of the week. <sighs> yep. Yeah. All right. We could go on for this all day. We need to get into the, the week six wrap because we're just doing weeks at the moment before the rounds all work out together. Tuesday night, Geelong, 3-9-27, defeated by Flagmantle, 6 9 <laughs> The Fremantle Dockers are legit. I'm just going to let Eliza go because Frio, way to go. Let's go. It's, yeah, it's becoming quite the season for Fremantle. Honestly, Two weeks ago when they lost Onya Tire to a season-ending ACL mm-hmm. injury, I, I went, they're cooked, stick a fork in them, they're done. They're not going to do anything for the rest of the season, but they've proved me wrong. Gone over to Melbourne and won two on the trot in their compressed fixture block. Uh, so 
really impressive win against Geelong. Um, just ground away at the Cats uh, across the course of four quarters. I'm going to get a quick stat up for you, though, because my one concern, and I tweeted this, is Fremantle's first quarter. So in first quarters mm-hmm. this year, they've kicked one goal three. Okay. That's not great. <laughs> four quarters this year, they've kicked 13 goals ten. Wow. So they're, they're coming home really yeah. well. Yeah, got an idea. But if they're going to be a premiership contender and compete with those best sides, I feel like they need to be putting their best foot forward early because against Adelaide, who's that one, you know, top three side they've played already this season, they got absolutely monstered and the game was out of their hands by quarter time. Yeah. So this is a very easy fix. The W team hang out with the men's team. All right, you're good in first quarters, but you suck in last quarters. Let's figure out how to get this out because Frio in the men's program this season – didn't know what a fourth quarter was about. Mm-hmm. So like, just hang out a little bit, talk it through, just, and you get this amazing just synergy of a team. I think that shows like how much they grind though. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, they're, mm-hmm. I thought they're still not playing amazing, amazing footy. They're still doing a few of the fundamentals not as well as they should be. A lot of missed kicks, drop marks, missed opportunities. Um, but they just grind. Their work rate is um, amazing. And I thought Hayley Miller really stepped up in that game and showed, you know, what a leader she is around the club. Um, I loved the um, Brazzle maloney um, matchup. I loved watching them um, on each other and, geez, Maloney didn't, Kick well. She missed an absolute um, sitter as well. Not so, great for my tip. Yeah, I thought Geelong were, were pretty um, unreliable in front of goal and I think that ultimately cost them the game. All right, let's move on to Frankston. 5.15, I yelled about this on Monday. Hated it, absolutely hated it. Hawthorne, 4.11.35, defeat Gold Coast, 3.4.22. Gold Coast didn't have Chuck Robottom. My mm-hmm. God, they would be bad. Triple mm-hmm. double, 30 touches, 10 clearances, 12 tackles. Absolute beast. Was this Gold Coast playing well or was this Hawthorne having a flat one? That's interesting. I mean, Hawthorne were really um, quite inaccurate. Yep. Um, so I think that's why uh, that's why the score was so close. I think having one good player in Robottom who's obviously having an absolutely ripper season, oh, so it's good. it's not enough to get your team over the line. And we know how how good the Hawks are. Um, yeah. This season, so yeah, I think I think the Hawks just had a, a a rough rough game. Yeah, I feel like they could have been that revenge element, hey, from the, the score review kerfuffle from earlier in the week. Like, did that give the Gold Coast a bit of you know um, drive and motivation to come out and put their best foot forward against the Hawks? We, mm-hmm. we don't know whether it was mentioned sort of pre-game, but I feel like if I was a player and my team was dropped to win, I'd be really keen to to get out there and sort of make amends and, you know, try and get that first W on the board. But, I mean, for for the Hawks, it sets up now a massive clash with the Dockers on Sunday. Maybe they did try and take their foot off the pedal a little bit, knowing that that's what they've got ahead of them this weekend. So that one shapes is a really interesting one because Fremantle are obviously the the second oldest list in the comp this year and it's going to be interesting to say see how they sort of finish off this compressed fixture block, knowing that they have a fair few players over the age of 30 on their list, whereas the Hawks are probably the, the opposite end of the age demographic. Mm. Those goddamn kids. Mm. Those goddamn kids. All right. Uh, Essendon defeated yeah. my beloved Sydney Swans 4 3 27 to 3 6 24 at Witten Oval. <sighs> God damn it. I owe, I owe you a pie. You owe me a pie. That is correct. Yeah. And a drink. Like it's a pie and a Coke. Oh, what? You're adding to this now? Yeah, because you need like a whole meal. Fine. Sure. Uh, pie and a Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good day. Yeah. Everything's coming up mill house. <laughs> <laughs> this, game was, this game was really good. So I went to Witten Oval again. Hot chips were only six and a half out of ten. Wow. Yeah. they were Back at Witten Oval again yeah. when you had a, a tenner. Eight no, out of ten eight, on, yeah. on uh, Friday night, six and a half on Mon- on Wednesday night. You reckon they left the oil in the fryers that No, long? they didn't salt them enough. Not enough <laughs> seasoning yeah. this time. Yeah. This was a really physical game. This was – we saw one of the all-time biffs in this game at three-quarter time. It was such a good biff. Well, we've talked about it. I've been talking back and forth with Eliza about it this year. The, the girls are bringing the hate this year, and I love it. Mm. Eliza? How's the aggro? Like, <laughs> it was it was all on. It was just like, let's go. Let's, you know, make a bit of a spectacle. And they kept piling in. Like, it wasn't, you know, dissipating. It was like, nah, someone else would come in from 50 metres away and throw a few. So I, it was quite entertaining to see, um, to be honest. But 
My issue with Essendon is if they had have lost this game, why was Matty Prasparkas on the bench for the last, I think it was seven, eight minutes of that fourth yeah. quarter and no one was coming to her. Like it yeah. was on the interchange side, but no one was coming off to get her back on the ground. I feel like that could have been a massive talking point if the Bombers had let this one slip. Mm. Uh, this was really physical inside and I, I'd called before the game that Tanya Kennedy had to go to Prasparkas and at the first bounce it was right on her yeah. hammer. I she thought, did really well. I thought Kennedy got the best of Presparkus yeah. on the night because she was she was not up to her usual Presparkus standard yeah. touches. Again, compressed fixture for both teams yeah, as well. Yeah. Like Maddie's been doing so much work in the midfield all season. Yeah. Could be hence probably why she had the last seven or eight minutes off. I thought the Bombers used the space really well on the ground. Like bigger ground, Wit Noble. They waltzed in a couple of very easy goals and and yeah. absolutely fluffed their lines a few times too. Whereas the Swans. Laura Gardner and Sophia Hurley are like, all right, we got it. Okay, no one's there. Yeah. It was very frustrating as a Swans fan. Yeah, the Swannies looked um, just like uncertain coming off half back. There was like a lot of um, like stuttered like passages of play. They'd go, they're waiting for everyone to sort of run forward and then they'd go to kick and and they'd just be like, they'd second guess themselves and and then, you know, the umpire would call play on and then they were cooked, you know. Um, but I thought the Bombers, yes, they played well. And we talked about this because you were like, great game. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hated that yeah. game. Um, just the, the again, and it's what we've said about the Bombers all season, just that that skill level. I can see what they're trying yeah. to do. There were some really good leads presented. But the kick inside 50, I was just like, you were under no pressure. It's like a training drill. And you haven't hit that target. Like, And it happened over and over again. And the times it did hit, they dropped the mark. Well, there the was bo- some really both teams did that. The yeah. Swans a couple of times coming out of halfback. I was like, oh, this is not like, fun. I was just like, oh, my God, you can't – there's no, there's no uh, like run on a play that yeah. you can see where you're like, oh, this is awesome because it just had to keep coming to ground and then another stoppage and another stoppage. You could see both teams. Essendon desperately missed Bonnie too good as that mid-forward connection and the Swans just need to draft someone who's six foot tall and can take a mark. Yeah. It's so obvious. But yeah. Good game. Well done, Essendon. I it was – Pine bit of coke. biff, loved it. Bit of biff, yeah. loved. It. That was my favourite part of the whole game. You could see that also. Um, I think it was uh, Alexia Hamilton was on the bench and was like, oh, I oh, hate. God, I got yeah. to get it. What was I hate that I'm not in this fight? It was fantastic. I think I, I said to you last night too. I reckon Essendon are like the buff heads yeah. of the of the competition. They're like the yeah, let's get in a fight kind that of team. Makes sense because some of their fans were throwing lip at the Swans fans yeah. on the hill going, "How's the grand final?" and there was about 15 depressed Swans fans that were ready to fight <laughs> because we're like, oh, hold on. We will take rubbish from a lot of clubs. <laughs> Except But not Essendon. Essendon. <laughs> the team who can't make or win a final, everyone else can throw lip. Yeah. Except gotcha. for Essendon. Gotcha. All right. Let's get to Thursday. Tonight, Icon Park. The D's take on GWS. The D's belted GWS by 77 last time these two teams played. But the D's are one and four and got flogged last week. Eliza, what in the hell is going wrong with the D's? We expected it, but this is bad. Yeah, it's honestly pretty sad to watch, to be completely honest, the downfall of this Demons team. Like, obviously, they've been smashed by injury. I think they had 12 on their injury list this week and obviously cutting into that, um, you know, under 24 sort of um, rule, which the AFLW has where train-ons come into play because you can't actually field a team and get a team on the park. So I think, like, we have to say that this Melbourne sort of era is um, over as of, you know, the, the belting last week. Like, they're obviously not going to make finals this year. And Time of I death, sort of week five. About, yeah. Sort of wrote about it this week. Like, what do you guys think about this whole sort of Melbourne – era of contention because I feel like to be honest they probably had one of the best lists since the start of the competition and I feel Mm. like one flag for them might be kind of unders for the talent they've had on hand Mm. it feels like a an actual whole club issue as well given lists both squads have had as well Mm -hmm. and then just one thing goes wrong and it's just been snowballing for the last 18 months like they got belted in the finals last year too so been Melbourne coming. men's. No, both both teams. Oh, gotcha. Both teams. gotcha. Uh, yeah, it's uh, injury injury season from hell this year, but they were pathetic last week. Ooh, using the p word. You can't lose like that to uh, to Essendon, but GWS. You have a look at their offense this year. Like they're playing good footy without winning games. Like they were they got some junk time goals last week, but the D's are the worst attacking team in the league right now. Can GWS cause an upset here? 
Yeah, I think yeah, I've, I've seen that note you've put there. Yeah, I think that they have the the capability to cause an upset and it's yeah. going to come from that midfield and just their attack and hunger for the ball because yeah. I feel like Melbourne, they're just like, I think they're really sort of licking their wounds they're at the moment. Fumes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Kate Hoare can't hold it all together and literally nobody is stepping up. Yeah. Um, and I know I know injury. So, it, it, like, they got ripped in the, the off season with half of their team being taken out, a third of their team, uh, and then they've been played with injury. I think that we're not even talking about the same team, Eliza, because, yeah. you know, I think the the dynasty is over, you know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, I don't even think we're talking about the same team. So are they doing okay with the list of what they've got? I think that is more a question that we need to ask. Who are you tipping, Eliza? I found this game extremely hard <laughs> to tip, as I have with a lot of games, but especially this one. But I, I have gone the Demons, but I'm not confident at all. We have done the exact same thing, haven't we? It's because it's in Melbourne. It's the only reason I'm tipping the Ds. Really? Yeah, only. If this was in at Henson, I'd be like, yeah, Giants. Henson Park vibes. Do you think they're going to bounce back after like an absolute walloping? they got two new debutants, Sarah Darcy and Delana, Delaney Madigan coming in. Very excited to be in there. But, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's a really hard one. It's a really hard one to call. And I I feel like they they're like might bounce back after the walloping okay. last week. Eliza? Yeah, there's there's got to be a response, I reckon. Like, even if you don't have the talent you usually have access to in the park, like, how many games have we seen decided by effort and intent? And I don't reckon the Demons had either of those last week against Essendon. So, wow. All right. Big words. I love like it. it. No, it's love good. It. We, we need to hold teams accountable. Let's go to Friday. Norwood Oval. Adelaide take on St Kilda. Crows unbeaten against the Saints. We were lauding the Saints at the start of the season. We loved them. We were on them. We were up and about. Looking back on them, they had the draw to start the season well. They haven't kicked more than four goals, 24 points, since round two, and now run headfirst into Ebony Marinoff, Anne Hatchard, everyone else who's annoyed that they let that game against Brisbane slip. Absolutely. Adelaide got this, got this in the bag. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're resting Okay. Players like North did last week. Because they've got the next week is their hectic fixture list. Yeah. Um, I like St Kilda. I think they've got great potential. We've seen them perform really well. Jesse Wardlaw is having a great season, but it's not uh, – it's it's just not good enough no. to stand up against the Crows. I think they will get absolutely pumped. Oh, that's rough. Eliza? Yeah, tend to agree. Like, <laughs> have just been – a cut above and they were, you know, it was pretty um, bad of them to drop that game against Brisbane. They had the running, they were in the winning position and just let the Lions take two absolutely insane contestant marks late um, yeah. and obviously flip, flip the game on its head. But I think um, St Kilda, we've sort of seen from them, like they, they try to get this really flashy, like fancy ball movement going and when they can't quite get things on their terms, they sort of fall apart a bit. And I reckon just the Crows will not let them um, play the way they want to play. And the Crows have got something to prove too. They'll be really disappointed coming off last week. And I, like, I would not want to be playing for St Kilda this week. Adelaide haven't <laughs> lost consecutive games since 2020. Uh, big question is, are the Saints still a sniff at the finals? No. I'm off them. You're off them I'm completely. Off. I'm off. They can't score. Well said. Well said. Uh, yeah, I don't like them for the finals. No. Adelaide by 40. Ooh. Yeah, I, the, that's a walloping. I'm going to do Adelaide by 36. <laughs> I was going to say 35, so plus one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I just price is right at all of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Saturday, Arden Street. I'm thinking of heading across to this as North Melbourne take on the Western Bulldogs. North four and zip against the Dogs. One by 50 points last time, or 46 to be exact. Emma's out potentially for the rest of the season. A six-week hamstring coming into week five, or week six, sorry. Not ideal. Uh, Libby Birch is going to have to step up here. And the dogs, every week they keep on improving. They really do. We're like, you know, we <laughs> we had turned off the dogs in the first couple of weeks. but Oh, we'd taken them out the back to we... the farm. <laughs> um, but... 
God, I just really, really love him. I, like, obviously, we love Grig. Um, I she, need, she's needed to get exciting. the hands on the footy yep, more. Yeah, I needed to get the hands on the footy more as well. Uh, but you've talked about Wes and Turner as well yeah. and how good she's been. Um, Emma, Emma Carney out. Is, is a huge out for North Melbourne. Yeah. I don't think it's going to affect their performance against the Bulldogs very much, but Lib, like Birchie, yes, but I reckon Birchie will be getting an osteo hat on and trying to get Carney back after, uh, you know, three weeks. Let's we'll see if we can make it a three-week hamstring injury. Yeah. What do we think is, has helped here with the Bulldogs turnaround, Eliza? Yeah, it, it's funny, isn't it? Because they were absolutely nowhere at the start of the season and then they lose Ellie Blackburn for the rest of the year. <laughs> their and- best player. They're literally their best player and they've somehow won games without her. So I can't really put my finger on it. I mean, Izzy Pritchard's having a, a pretty phenomenal season yeah. in the midfield and uh, Jess Fitzgerald has sort of been the one that, that's gone in and chopped out um, in the absence of Blackburn, but she's also having an impact up forward. So mm. maybe it is just a bit of continuity, a bit more time under um, Tam Hyatt to sort of learn her system and what she expects within games, um, you know, sort of building gradually incrementally week on week, but yeah, can't see them doing a whole heap against the kangaroos, unfortunately. There is some rain around on Saturday. Oh, stop. And our the big, kryptonite. And the the rain is th- the kryptonite. Yeah. The kryptonite for North is wet weather footy. So this could be the gross contested game that the dogs are like, let's go, let's hook in. I feel like the doggies as well, they're, they're kind of like it's nothing a, to lose. It's going to be a I mean? rolling mall. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to see, especially if there's rain, yeah. I'm excited to see them really try and, you know, put the hand to the throat of, of North and, and try and, you know, make it a little bit closer, steal some points off them. Mm. You've also got a couple of players that had had rests over the last week. And so it even wouldn't shock me if maybe – Jazz Garner might sit a game out here as well because do you reckon they've had the, they've had their crazy fixture and it's like you know I know you're not taking the dogs lightly but it's like yeah we can rest a couple of plays here or maybe next week before they play the Swans. Fascinating. Mm. What are your thoughts, Eliza? I don't know. I I don't like seeing the stars miss games. Yeah. But, you know, Jazz Garner is still chasing that W best of Ferris. I don't reckon, reckon she's game. on it this season. I don't reckon yeah, she's on it. A little bit. Mm. Yeah. Well, the umpires don't notice her anyway, so it's not like it's going to make a difference if she yeah. misses a game or not. So, yeah. <laughs> just just bang, shots bang. fired. I love that. Well, can, well, because this is coming from a piece of expertise, given Absolutely. you know nailed the vote, uh, the votes in the Glendale, Glendenning Adel Allen Medal, whatever the Derby Medal is, that one <laughs> nailed the vote. So can can say I I know what I'm doing. Ah. Uh, North by two goals in a gross, wet contest. Mm, interesting. Can I give a points if it's raining and a points if it's not raining? Yes. <laughs> if it's raining, um, north by five. Yeah. If it's not raining, north by 35. Lies up. I'm just going to go north by 22. Lock yeah. it in. Yeah. Let's get to the Swinburne Centre. As we found out, it's punt road, not Collingwood's <laughs> training ground. Learning every day. Richmond take on Collingwood, 305, Pies 2 and 1. The Tigs won last year by 52 points. They're back. Yeah, I, th- they I think you have to move on from your dislike and hate of how they're going as far as the team is concerned. Mm-hmm. They are flying and are looking very dangerous. Collingwood shouldn't have won last week. I'm just going to throw it out there. They didn't. They wow. shouldn't have won. Well, okay. They got gifted the game. Well, you know, that that is that is sport. My yeah. friend, that yeah. is sport. Uh, um, I know the Tigers lost last week against North Melbourne, but Hobart, weird things happen. I reckon they can move the footy and just cut through uh, Collingwood here, get him in transition. 100% they will. But um, Eliza, do you know if we've got Katie Brennan back for this one? Yes. That would have a huge impact on it, I would think. KB, yep. I, I reckon that's definitely if things weren't already in Richmond's baby, but more so now because Collingwood's defence has been guilty of leaking a little bit this season. So Chuck, you know, the key forward back in there, running out of the square, and it, it could get um, a little bit ugly for the Magpies. And I just don't think they've got anyone to to shut down Monconti either. Like, no. you know, the, the, the Collingwood midfield are not doing enough. You know, Benici's, yes, she's been great, but... Um, she's a ball getter, not a not a, not a board deliverer. <laughs> That's, i got to lay off that. It feels mean at this point. <laughs> it's, it's slowly getting better every week, but like Lucy Cronin's going to have to be accountable as well, and she just can't sit behind the footy like she yeah. did last week and just go, ah, this is great. Yeah. Because the Tigers just are much more slicker with the footy than mm-hmm. what Gold Coast are. They, they, they win this by what? Is this a percentage booster? Ooh, like that much. This is like this is like 
40 to 7 or something, and it's just like you get the big boost because they're currently on about 160%, and it could really help them coming into finals when Hawthorne's on 170, Brisbane 161, Freo 130, the Crows 176. I'm going Tigers by 22. Yep. I don't think it will be a blowout. I reckon it will be Tigers by like 27. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 27 is not a blowout. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mineral Resources Park. We're going to let Eliza run through this one as West Coast host Port Adelaide. Eagles are 2-0. They beat Port by a goal the last time they played, so it was one of the rare times West Coast won in the last few years. They've now won three of their last four. Mm. Port are good, but also terrible. (laughs) Ella Roberts could be the best player in the competition, and if she played footy in Melbourne, the whole world would be losing their mind right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let Eliza go because this is West Coast, this is her area, and Daisy Pierce rules. (laughs) Well, I, I remember in our preview episode at the start of the year, I was like, nah, Daisy can't make that much change in one season. Like, there's no magic Daisy does. Like, not going to happen. And now suddenly it looks like they're going to make finals and I have egg on my face. So, you and starting, Alex. <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking Haterade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been really impressed with what the Eagles have done this season. And it's almost like when they do come up against teams like, Something about the way they play and the way Daisy structured up this team, it just puts the other team, like, off. Like, it, I can't really explain exactly why, but it's just, like, just disrupts them a little bit. And we saw that last week against the Giants when they kicked their, their highest ever score in the history of the AFLW, which is, um, you know, pretty cool to, to see them finally get that reward on the scoreboard because that's that mid-forward connection has probably been the area that they haven't quite nailed in every game so far this season. But... I reckon they're a real genuine red hot chance against power. I've tipped them. I think they're they're going to pick up another one. And now the big question is whether they can make that top eight, isn't it? Mm. Well, it's also for Port. You you look at how they're going to score, and Gemma Houghton has been firing. She's she's awesome. Yeah, they, the Port but would be nothing without her at need, the moment. They need more from around her. I keep saying throw Shanae Goody on the footy because uh, they they just need, it feels like they need a spark. Yeah, but like, they're good, but it's like. They're beige. I would tend to agree with that mm. a little bit. I think that they're a really grind team as well. Yeah. I feel like they're like a Prio uh, where they've, you know, the the ones that they've won, they've really had to grind to get in there. They've had to work scrappy footy and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yes, um, Houghton is amazing. You've got Teekle as well. Oh, big takes. This is big a big, takes. big takes podcast here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like them. And this this one was a little bit harder for me to pick the Eagles yeah. because I think that Port Adelaide do have the ability to put it together to to beat the Eagles. But what you just said, Eliza, is, is you know, their structure and the way they're playing footy at the moment, it does throw a lot of teams off. Um, and I just think that they're, they're too good. Ella Roberts uh, is amazing. But you also got to consider Bella Lewis is probably playing the best footy of her mm-hmm. life. And Alison Drennan just like, yeah, I'm on this train too. And uh, Oh, yeah, Drennan's had no a one's great noticing her. season. And she's getting 20-odd yeah. touches and a bunch of clearance. It's like, oh, yeah, Drennan. Yeah. yeah. She rules. Yeah. Sorry, we forgot you. It, yeah. it feels unfair. Yeah. She's really solid with the footy, really reliable, and I think like a really great leader around the club as well. They're going to make the finals. They're going to win. Eliza? They're going to make the final. I reckon I reckon that's not too far off. I was actually looking at their fixture for the rest of the season earlier this week. And to be honest, they have a pretty good run into the finals and I would not be surprised to see them stick around in that top eight. I don't reckon they'll do much. That's the only caveat mm. to it because they have had a really easy fixture this year, which is obviously a result of finishing in the top four, uh, bottom four, sorry, last season. Um but, yeah, I can see them making it, uh, but I can't see them having a big dent. So we'll quickly go through this. So we think they beat Port this weekend. They play Hawthorne next week, probably a loss. Probably a loss, yeah. They've got a derby. Anything can happen. So yeah. let's you can split the difference there. They play Geelong in Perth, which at the moment you're probably tipping them because it's yeah. in Perth. So that gets them to six wins, possibly seven. And then they play the Swans in the last round. The Swans in the last round might have nothing to play for. Yeah. They're winning six games. They are 100% playing finals. Correct. Daisy's freak. Can you imagine? 
Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, I gotta I gotta really eat some crumb there. Uh anyway, West Coast win this by probably three goals, I reckon. I've put yep. by eighteen, yep. yes. Playing great footy. Icon Park. Sa- Saturday night, as we talked about Darcy Vessio earlier in the show, it is the 1,000th game that Carlton will play at Icon mm. Park for premiership points. It's also Darcy Vessio's 75th game. So big milestone there, as unfortunately they're going to get pumped by the Brisbane Lions. 2-2-1 <laughs> uh, record. Brisbane won last meeting by six goals, which shocks me that it's a 2-2-1 two, two and one record. Mm. Like real even. Carlton just won't be able to kick a score to keep up, unfortunately. I, yeah. I want to hope for them in a big game, but God, Brisbane just keep finding a way. Yeah, I think they're going to be absolutely put down by Brisbane really, really early on. Um, <laughs> Brisbane, uh, you know, top side, if not the best side in the competition right now, uh, and they just take no prisoners. Um, it, and Carlton has absolutely no one on the team at the moment who's really sort of standing up and having, you know, standout games. Gearin was was sort of good in those first few games and got a lot of touches and had a great impact and and that whole uh, midsection. Um, but they haven't really done much recently to 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 get them across the line or do anything outstanding. So yep. yeah, um, Brisbane are going to absolutely pump them. Oh, how are we feeling about this, Eliza? Like, what are your thoughts on sort of Carlton's season so far too? Bit hot and cold, haven't they? Like, mm. I mean, it's sort of, you know, one week they, they come out of the box and really impress you and you're like, oh, geez, uh, they're showing a fair bit here. Like that win against Geelong they had where they mm. just absolutely dominated from where to go. But then they drop off the pace again and get smashed by Port last weekend. So it's just, you know, this sort of yo-yo um, season for them. But... Brisbane, like, I don't reckon I've seen a team that can, you know, turn defence into offence so quickly. Like, their half-back line is so impressive with the likes of Nat Grider and, you know, Jade Ellinger charging through the middle and, you know, getting teams on the hop. Like, I just love um, that element of the way they play and their fitness and their running patterns are just, you know, that that's why they've been a top three team in the comp for so long. Mm-hmm. For Carlton to have a chance, they're going to have to find a way to dominate Ali Anderson, Bell Dawes, and Sophie Conway. There's no such thing. What in what alternate universe do you dominate Ali Anderson? Uh, you cannot. No one. Mimi Hill and and Keely Sherrard just tried to stop her somehow, and they just let Abby McKay just get the footy. Yeah, but I'm ho- I'm trying you, to find you open the door for somebody else from the Lions' uh, amazing expertise yeah. to just step in and do that. I'm just trying to find some positive for Carlton because they're now friends of the show as well. Yeah, look, love Carlton, <laughs> love Darcy Vessio. Um, I hope they have an incredible uh, game it's... this weekend. I hope they have time to reflect on 75 games and what that means in – in this competition and where yeah. it stands right now. Darcy did have their, just in that quick chat we had, it's, I think they felt that this is an opportunity to really have like a big game because it probably hasn't been their best season mm-hmm. so far. But Brisbane win by six goals. <laughs> Only six? Yeah. Okay. You got the emotion. Eliza, where are you at on this one? I reckon Brisbane by 40. Yeah, close enough. I'm going to go Brisbane by 56. Oh, that's not Ooh. ideal on a Saturday night at Icon Park. <laughs> Let's get to people first. Stadium up on the Gold Coast. Big trumpets. Gold Coast take on the Bomb Rays. The Suns beat them last year by 14 points. Gold Coast. God, they need a win. Like so horrendously bad. They're the only team without a win so far. Gold Coast had a good season last year, though. Do you know what I mean? They had like a not bad season. We talked about this in the season preview, and then we were like, oh, yeah, they don't have a defense. We kind of forgot that part, that they got pilfered in the offseason. I had them in at... um, I had, them like, around, yeah. I had them at four, I think finishing fourth, like top yeah. four. That's like, embarrassing. Oh, it's embarrassing, <laughs> isn't it? It's really embarrassing. It's like you guys not believing in Davey Pierce. Like, ugh. <laughs> That's yeah. also embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'd seen the Gold Coast do it. Daisy hadn't done anything yet. <laughs> oh, except for just be a pioneer of the entire league. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> hadn't, hadn't coached anything. <laughs> Five down, Charge. Yeah, I know. Uh, Gold Coast with Robottom and Single in the midfield like, have been dominating the footy. This, I can't wait to see Charlie Robottom and Prasparkas just run head to head. Oh, yeah. This is physical. Like You're going to hear the hits through the TV. Yeah. But then they get the ball and they're like, got no one forward. Yep. Big problems where Essendon feels the same. But Bonnie, too good, has to get through a fitness test today and she will be back on... Five weeks after 
destroying her knee and going through that awful contest. Mm. That's amazing. Bonnie what? Too Good will pass that fitness test today. I guaranteed. That. They said eight weeks, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Like six to eight. Yep. And she's back in five. Yep. Like, I can't. Just yeah. put in a phone call to Libby Birch, cannot confirm, but probably, and said, how do I do it in half the amount of time, mate? How do I do it in half the amount of time? A lot of concrete and a lot of physio work. That's I right. She was drinking the concrete, yeah. you know what I mean? But saw her running around last night at Whit Noble, like no brace, nothing, fine, laughing, having a good time. I yeah. I reckon she'll be in. Absolutely. So Essendon, we saw them last night. They are good. And then they have patches where and then they are bad. Yeah, and they're just a sphincter tightener. It's like, <laughs> oh god, like it's it's happening again. It's, it's happening a four letter again. word, yeller. Yeah, at the TV, if I couldn't yell at Darrow Bannister more or um, <laughs> uh, Paige last yeah. night as well, and I was just like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was a it was a frustrating one to watch last night. Um, uh, yeah. They just need to be able to get back to basics and be able to land a kick and take a mark. So is that just going to come down to it between these two teams? And Eliza, you can jump in here. Is it just being able to hit targets and go back to the basics? And uh, I suppose it's going to be super hot up there too because it's the Gold Coast. So that could be the Suns' chance is heat and a lot of games in a short period of time for both teams. Literally, like, just the fundamentals, just please hit your kicks, take your marks. Like, I'm crying out for it. But, yeah, this was another game um, this weekend which I found extremely, extremely hard to tip. Mm. So it's not just me, Eliza. You're noticing it as well with the Bombers. Like, I feel like sometimes I'm coming at it from a frustrated fan and they're because they're my team and I want them to do well and I'm, like, more critical on them. But they're not hitting a target, right? They're dropping, like, simple marks and just stifling their whole, like, setup and play. Yeah, it is, like, just watching them in certain games, they've been a bit yo-yo as well. Like, absolutely dominated Melbourne, could not put a foot wrong. And then suddenly when you put a bit of pressure on them, you know, Sydney are, um, scrapping and desperate for a win, like they just seem to drop off the pace a little bit. Mm. Um, it is must be really frustrating for you. Um, just like it is that the men's team haven't won a final, but um, <laughs> ah, it's been constantly, tough. constantly been tough. disappointing. The yeah. Oh, you, you, I could see the Essendon fans last night. This it was like a reoccurring nightmare of oh god, it's happening again, and oh god, it's happening to Sydney. Mm. It was quite funny, but mm. deservedly won that game. So the big question is this. Are the Bombers still a final ch- finals chance? And if they win this, uh, finals dons on. Who have they? Who have they got? I'll check as you as you yay or nay me. Yeah, I am trying to look. If they've if they've got a decent run home, then yes, I think they're playing well enough with those tight games. Um, you know, like against Gold Coast. Uh, you know, if they can get those, if they can tick those ones off, then yes, I think they're a definite finals chance. Dogs next week. Into North, into Richmond, Carlton final round. So you, they have to win. On... They got to win them all. They got to beat Dogs. They got to beat Carlton, and yeah. they got to beat um, Richmond. Richmond. There's no way they're competitive against North. North. So with that being said, I'm tipping the Gold Coast because it'd be the most Essendon thing ever. Oh my God! Unbelievable! How, how dare I attack you with the truth? How dare you? Should we double down on the pie? Absolutely not. I, <laughs> I, I so I owe you one. I owe Stats Guy one for a Jason Horn Francis sack butters head to head in the Brownlow, and I owe a mate of mine who goes for Brisbane one because we just had a friendly sandwich bet from the grand final. So okay, no more sandwich bets. I'm in deficit. I'm just no more. Eliza, who are you tipping in this one? I hate to say it, but I took the Suns as well. Yes! Unbelievable, Eliza. Unbelievable. Big hater podcast this. Oh, oh my God. The Suns are due. They've had a really hard week. You know, the poor little Suns, like, up on the Gold Coast. We're, Unbelievable. I tell you, they just desperately need to go through, like, that restructure as far as the Guernsey, the logo, and everything is concerned. It's just they need they need a refresh. Henson Park, 3.05, Sunday afternoon. The vibes will be high because the Swans always bring the vibes at Henson Park as they host Geelong. Cats are 2-0, won the last meeting by 26 points. You say the Swans aren't going great, but then you take a look at the ladder 
and you see how Geelong are going and you're like, this makes absolutely no sense because they played in the greatest game of AFLW last week. Yeah, it was really good. And other than that, they couldn't hit a barn door if it was wide open. <laughs> I don't know what's going on at Geelong. They are one, four and one. But you just look at them like, they're just better than Sydney, right? I don't know. This is a hard well, one. What you should think, but I just I'm not convinced. Like that should be the answer, but you just they're so inconsistent. I mean, I've picked them. Yeah, but so <laughs> it's like the, their forward line's so inconsistent. I know Maloney can kick goals from all angles, but can miss a sitter. Georgie Prasparkas in out in out like makes a great duo in there with Morrison, yep. but it's just like Amy McDonald's gone. Like there's there's. They're not, they're not doing enough. I know what's going to happen. Tanya Kenny's like, hi, Georgie, you're in for a long day. I'm yeah. going to hit you in the quad at every opportunity. <laughs> Just bang. Yeah. It's. Yeah. And I feel like Sydney will be coming off that loss last night and, and again, have that like something to prove um, feeling because, you know, it ended up being a very tight game, yeah. even though, you know, Bombers and sort of dominated that A typical that Swans game of two and a half quarters of nothing. And yeah. then, you know, 40, uh, 30 minutes of like, oh, we can play footy. The, the Swans will be out to get them, absolutely. But I think when it comes down to like fundamental footy and kicking and marking, Geelong's got yep. it in the bag over the top of them. Um, and, yeah, I think I think Geelong, I don't know, by like 12 yeah. or something. Montana Ham is a fitness test. Is she someone that could swing this game, Eliza? No. Nah, it is. <laughs> If you're, if you're carrying an injury, if you're having fitness tests and whatnot, I feel like it's just going to be something that, you know, sort of lingers for the rest of the season, to be honest. I don't think we're going to see her back at full tilt um, and that's sort of, you know, push me in Geelong's favour. Uh, if if she can play but she's not like 100% ready to run the mid, play her out of the goal square because she's yeah, tall, she can something. take a mark and she can help out Privatelli who last night just keeps getting double teamed, was taking some marks. The big question is this, is can the Swans get that mid-forward connection right? Because Laura Gardner and Sophia Hurley keep finding the footy. There's just no one leading. Like they're not. It's one thing you've noticed with the Swans. They don't lead into the right spaces or choose the right option. It's just that simple, take the first option, hit up a short lead. Yeah, I'm just having a look at their stats last night. I don't think they took many marks it inside 50. Three or, four. three or four. Yeah, marks inside 54. Yep. Tackles inside, yeah. Uh, so you're Geelong... Yeah, I'm Geelong. Uh, I've on the app. I've tipped uh, on like our tips that have gone out. I've tipped Geelong, but I'm going to tip this ones. I saw enough out of them last you night. You can't change. You got to commit. This is my show. I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm a Swans fan. We've lost three <laughs> games in a week, Eliza. I need something. Good call, Eliza. Good call. She's right. You tried. You yeah. tried. Anyway, Swans my goal. Uh, Fremantle and Hawthorne at Fremantle Oval. 3 2 0. They won the last meeting by two goals. This is absolutely the game of the round. You've got the Hawkballers coming to Perth to take on Frio, who just keep finding a way. Take it away, Eliza. Yeah, I mean, we touched on it a little bit earlier in the show, but this is honestly like going to be, I reckon, one of the, the matches of the weekend because you've got the Red Hot Hawks um, coming over to Perth uh, to take on the, the Dockers who just, you know, like you said, continu continually grind out games. And I'm going to write about this um, for Code Sports tomorrow, but there's a little bit more on the line than just four points because this isn't known publicly, but Dan Webster, obviously coach of Hawthorne, he actually applied for the Fremantle job when that was uh, on offer a week, you know, a year ago and obviously got beaten out by Lisa Webb for that gig. So I, I reckon there is a bit of a grudge clash in the coach's box. Battle of the Webs. That's Scoop Liza coming through. Yeah. Big Scoop. That's I love a revenge game as well. But so we know what Hawthorne are going to do. They're just going to try and absolutely run through Fremantle yep. and cut them up with transition. Yep. And their halfbacks and fullbacks are just going to stand there and have to brick wall it. Mm -hmm. Can they do it? <sighs> I reckon the Hawks. I, I've tipped the Hawks purely because of the Fremantle age factor. Um they, you know, they haven't played incredibly well at Fremantle yeah. over this year, to be honest. Like, they obviously got smashed by Adelaide, like, had to win after the siren against the Demons, um, and we know how poorly the Demons have been going. Mm -hmm. uh, so I reckon the Hawks will get him, but I reckon it'll be close. 
I think it would be really, oh. really close as well. Um, I was, you put here, yeah, the the midfield, Hayley Miller, yes. Um, and O'Driscoll is just, I love watching her play. Yeah. She's an absolute superstar. Um, I just don't think Frio have got enough to beat Hawthorne. Hawthorne are in form and they they seem to be gelling better together every single game. And I think, yeah, their they're playing style um, – they're just not going to be able to be shut down by Freo. I don't think that they've got the utility to do it. I don't think Freo can kick a, as big a score as Hawthorne, so that's why I'm leaning to Hawthorne. But the big question is, if if both teams make the finals, we're assuming they're both going to, who is the bigger threat? Hawks. Hawks. All right. <laughs> yeah. so, Hawks said exactly the same way. So I'm going to back Freo. I'm going to back Freo in because Hawkball could come unstuck like that. Why? What? What would give you any indication that can come unstuck when they are winning consecutively? Because yeah. they could very easily run out of gas. Whereas I'm going to back in the structure of Freo when they get time to rest and reset. Me like, all right. Freo, one of the oldest teams, is not going to run out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. Heads up. Adds up. <laughs> it's math. As, as we know, it's a theory in my head, so it works. Absolutely. Anyway. He's get, training for a marathon. He's not himself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a midlife crisis moment on Monday after we did our review show. I'm like, I'm going to do it. And I signed up for it straight away. Surely you're doing the half marathon. Nah, full. Full Surely banger. Surely you're only doing 10Ks. Nah, full banger. 42.2 April 27th in Ballarat. Okay. You're yeah. a silly little sort. How many runs have you gone for since you signed up for it? I went for one this morning, actually. One. One whole run. I've got six months. And that's what they all say. I've already done a marathon. Have you? Yeah. I did the Melbourne one two years ago. Congratulations. Yeah. So I think I can do it. I hope I can do it. Anyway, one big call for the weekend. I tear my hamstring going for run. No. Uh, Gold Coast knock off the Bombers and get their first win of the year. My big call. Bonnie, two good plays and she kicks three. That's fair. Eliza? Damn, you stole my notes. Ah. I was gonna go to fun zone. <laughs> but can I can I can we go in joint partners on that? Or yeah. do I have to come up with No, no, that's yeah. fine. We can roll in. Yeah. I like do, this. Do, 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 do. Just a, just a, a trumpet. Yeah, it's just a big triangle oh, in well, I love it how everything hinges on the game that's probably gonna no offense, but probably gonna be the least attended game of the weekend. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are we keeping an eye on this weekend? Well, we're seeing if Carlton can do anything in their 1,000th game. We're going to see if North can overcome the kryptonite of rain. Oh, yeah. If Hawthorne can, tra- and Hawthorne, Hawthorne yeah. can travel west, can they get it done? Can the Swans or Geelong show us something? Can the dogs take it up, even though if it does rain? And can Adelaide just go blip on the rain? Yeah, see you later. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. What a week. What a week it's going to be. What a week of footy, hey? We're in the... the- Starting towards the trail end of the 700 games in four weeks, so it's um, it's it's a good time. Well, Eliza's wrapped. She gets to go to back-to-back games this weekend. So like footy. You're in a double header. I reckon I'm going to bring you guys a cross-continent chip review from Fremantle Oval on Sunday because I've got a 30th on Saturday night and I might be a bit dusty by the time I rock up at Freo Oval. So I reckon hot chips are going to be the fix for that. So oh, 100%. Yeah, Stay tuned, I'll bring you a hot chip review. We will, get, we will get you in contact with Social Gal Spence and we can whack that up across all of our social medias. Where you should check us out, it is AFLW today across X, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. Check out our tip reviews, all the silliness, mark of the year, goal of the year, all that stuff going on. You're going to rank all of the Pride Round kits next week. I am. Because next week is Pride Round. Correct. That's a perfect one for you, I reckon. I've already got... Um, Best and worst. Yeah, I've already got a best and worst. <laughs> We've only seen about five of them. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, Ugh. So I can't wait for that. It's going to be some good social content next week. So remember to smash a like across all of that. Of course, YouTube. It is AFL Today. So Spotify, wherever you get a good podcast, just type in AFL Today. Thank you, Bryony. Thank you very much, Alex Donnelly. Oh, yeah, so full names. Thank, big thank you to Eliza Riley over in the West, up and about, and also going to give us a chip review. Well done, Liz. Appreciate it. I've only worked for the good stuff, you know. I'm just... <laughs> it's the it's the important content that we bring. Absolutely. Hot chips at all the ovals. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to our other shows. Cricket Today is Cricket's about to get up and rolling. Football Today, EPL season's up and going. NBA Australia, NFL Australia, as NBA is about to come back. And I think we're in week five of the NFL. Of course, hold all tickets if you enjoy your horse racing. Get around them like I'm going to get around the hot chips at Arden Street on a Saturday afternoon because we need to do a review there. 
Anyway, that's it. We will catch you Monday for a review of this massive weekend of footy. Till then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back.